Hello everybody, this is B, and we are back again with Speed Dating with Ghost. Um, we're going to get right into this. So, let's go ahead and do this. Oh, hello there. You must be there here for speed dating. My name's Fran. I run this little operation. Nice to meet you, Fran. You're a nice one. You, we get all kinds of ghosts here. Nice ones, sad ones, a few spooky customers. It gets lonely being a ghost. It has been pretty difficult. It has. Wonderful, then let's get started. We got three rooms set up, each with their own super fun themes. You pick one and set up the table. Then what? Another ghost who also signed up sits across from you. You'll have a few minutes to get to know them. Then a bell rings and you switch seats. Oh, from somewhere, a bell rings from somewhere. Just like that. In all, you'll meet three ghosts over two rounds. Now at the end, you get to choose your favorite. If they liked you too, you go on a date. How's all that sound? Uh, I can't wait. Neither can I. First things first though, I gotta pick a room. Uh, we're gonna go, we before in the past chose the room of liars, so we're gonna go with the room of black. The room of black isn't really a room at all. It's more of a garden car courtyard. The sun beats down as you squint to see what's growing. Rows upon rows of yellow and brown plants, drying and rotting in the sun. What fruit these plants produce shriveled on the vine. But there's a peace to this place. The crickets are chirping, and while beyond the garden a train passes, you sit at a table opposite an empty chair. The bell rings and a ghost appears. Ooh, I'm a ghost. Ooh, I'm gonna, ooh, lol, wait, lol, <laughs> isn't it great being dead? Uh, it's pretty neat, right? Being dead is the best way to live. I'm Drea. I'm like, dead, obviously. Nice to meet you. Drea. <laughs> Square. Hey, I'm cool. Sure you are. That's not your pon Pontiac in the park Pontiac in the parking lot. Uh What's wrong with my car? It's a moonfire. Who are you trying to fool with the that spoiler? Not me. Deads drive the worst cars. It's like you die, and you instantly forget how to live. Drea looks around. I mean, look at this place. Only ghosts would think a rotting garden is a good place to pick up. Uh, and yet, here you are. You're here. Oh yeah, I'm here. Even tried dating ghosts in the wild? Ever tried dating ghosts in the wild? They all just contort and wail. And I'm the good way. What are you into? Boobies. <laughs> Andrea snorts a little. No, but seriously. I've gone out with all kinds. Pretty girls in dresses who carry their own heads. A shadow who refused to let me look directly at them. Being dead is great. It's other dead people that kill me. What? Where? I could use one. <laughs> Just kidding. Pot does nothing now. Holly does it. Holly does it do nothing. Getting messed up. It's the only thing I miss about living. When I was alive, I loved jokes about dying. Life sucked. Jerks everywhere. Never enough money. The jerks got the money. I'd be all. The best way to die is now. Before death does me in. Should at least buy me dinner. Jokes, you know. But now that I'm dead, it just feels right. Like maybe it was meant to be. Which I guess makes sense. 
Since we all die in junk. The bell rings. Antler ghost rang that bell thing. That means we changed places. See you in a bit. Another ghost appears. Oh, look at you. Oh, hello there. I'm Hattie. You'll have to forgive me. I'm a little shy. It's just so nice to get out of the home. To see a new face. Oh no. The home? I haunt the old folks. Oh no. So, this might be bad for me. <laughs> Cause this is like, literally gonna come out on the day my granny's death, or like birthday. Uh, and she died soon after. It's been a year. And I'm still not over it. I haunt the old folks' home where I died. Queen Mary's. It's not a nice place to live, let alone die. Eh. They treated you poorly? I wouldn't say poorly. The nurses do their best. But they are short staffed. The residents are frequently neglected. To make Queen Mary's a little better, that is my mission in death. How do you help? Any way I can. I keep watch on vitals. Bring a nurse when needed. Tuck residents in at night. In their final moments, I whisper in their ears. There's more, I say. Just you wait. That's so nice. I never thought death would be like this. As ghosts, we have power over the living. Whether they know it or not. We ought to use that power for good. I agree. Now that you're dead, what do you do with your time? Uh, I'm still figuring that out. It's strange being dead. There's a Bible verse I think about sometimes. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. I still have both my eyes. But I see, but what I see isn't like hell. All those other people. That's over my head. I'm not sure I understand it either. I'm just grateful there's an afterlife after all. The bell rings. Oh, I guess that's our time. I suppose I will see you again. When I come back around, thank you for the talk. <laughs> Hurting. Another ghost appears. Oh, hi. The ghost says nothing, only stares. Is it because I'm crying? <laughs> uh, hi. What is it you require? Um, companionship. You will not receive companionship from me. I bring only pain. Like a memory that haunts. Like a curse. Uh, who are you? My name? I am unknowable. The shadow of a shadow. You can call me Gary. That is who I was. I used to be. What happened to you? The ghost's eyes grow wide. Oh. He breathes in deeply remembering something horrible. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Do not be sorry. Sorry is reserved for those who are not. I still feel the blade. The life draining out. The emptied and an empty space or once there was something now cobwebs a draft uh who killed you gary i i do not remember can you help me remember oh gary the bell rings your time with gary ends before you have a chance to answer perhaps if you get to know gary a little better you can help him Help him remember how he died. It's one way to spend an evening. 
The second round begins. Hey, Drea. Everybody's so flippin' gloomy here. I keep thinking, who died? <laughs> we could liven it up. Oh, man. Okay. Like a prank? Or maybe we try to scare the other ghosts. Who haunts the haunters or something? They seem hard to spook, Sai. You're probably right. That one ghost, especially. Uh, the creepy guy with the huge mouth? No. Though like he looks like a snowball. Horrifying. Hmm. I did see a panicky little ghost. He went into another room. If only they were here. Man, we should just go haunting. Break out some flesh bags. Give them something to be afraid of. I like that. Cool. I don't meet a lot of ghosts like you. Nice ones, I mean. Usually I pal around with feather poltergeist. So you're actually like that? So you actually like that, nice? What's wrong with pol- I mean, why not? It's not like nice is all you are. Nice is a bonus for me. A personality quirk or whatever. Nice is more than a quirk. Uh, not always nice. Oh, I'm sure. You're so mean. Scary, too. <laughs> Don't make that face. I like you just like you are. I sort of collect weirdos. My friend Beck likes to make corpses wink at morticians at open casket funerals. Allison hunts on an airport hotel. Guess she likes to watch weird people doing it. I just hang out. Go to shows. Terrorize this normie couple I know. Rich types who moved into my old house. They actually put up a plaque that says, Live, laugh, love. Bleh. How do you terrorize the normies? Possession is fun. When they're asleep, I make the girls sit up in bed and point at the corner in the dark. The guy wakes up, sees what she's pointing at, and freaks out. He wakes her up and she freaks out too. It's great. Sometimes. Other times, I want to meet ghosts who aren't like me. I'm sick of doing the same things. But then I actually remember, I like doing those things. I really just want to share them with someone new. I know I probably sound pathetic. You don't. Not at all. No, the bell rings. Already? This was okay. Come find me after. We'll do something. I'm up for anything. Good. Oh god, Hattie. Hello again. How's the speed dating going? Is it everything you hoped it would be? Ah, uh, you're my favorite. There's no need for flattery. We're already getting along fine. There's something different about you. A light. I can literally, literally see it glowing in there. In your guts. Just don't let it go to your head. Dying has shown me there's still a lot to learn. Always something new worth knowing. Hattie looks at the garden rotting around you. Do you like gardening? I love gardening. I never much cared for flowers. They're beautiful, but they sure don't last. Vegetables are where it, it's at. I love ones that grow like the, I like I love ones that grow like the Dickens squash snap peas. Spaghetti squash vines are thick and sharp. They will choke other plants if you're not careful. Uh, I like tomatoes. Tomatoes are finicky plants. They need a water. They need water to survive, of course. But too much, and they'll start to get sick. Now that we're ghosts, I know we don't need to eat. I still like to grow food. Help something live, you know. The bell rings. Oop! There's the bell. I'm due at the nursing home tomorrow. I'd be honored if you join me. Oh no. It's not as exciting a, a date as other ghosts might offer, but it has its rewards. Someone dear to me is taking a turn for the worse. 
I'm afraid he only has a few days left. I want to make sure he knows they won't be his last. That sounds wonderful. I'm pleased that you agree. I'll meet you at Queen Mary's at 7 a.m. Sorry if that's a little early. I'm my best self. I'm my best self before noon. Hattie floats over to the next table. She looks back and smiles. Hello, Greg or Gary. How did you die? Oh, again. Uh, hello again to you too. Hello. How did you die? Uh, how would I probably die? I'm gonna say probably tragically. What killed you? Uh, I'm gonna say maybe car crash? Broken metal. Your face in the steering wheel. Blood pulling on the pavement. Your blood. It doesn't look that bad, someone says. Uh, a I was a pedestrian, actually. Oh. I only recall slippers in my last moments alive. Emotions. Work. A shadow along the wall. I know these memories aren't important. I do not know how they'll fit together. Tell me about the emotions. There was anger, frustration, guilt. Now all I long for is revenge. It pumps through me like blood. But how can I need revenge when I don't know what happened? When I don't know who it is to blame. You mentioned a shadow? The shadow is long, dark, but familiar. It crept along the wall. It crept through the office as we worked at night. It came for me. It has a name. Oh, why can't I remember its name? Gary's eyes looked so threatening when you first met him. Now they look sort of sad. Uh... You're a good ghost, Gary. Your kindness. It is rare among our kind. I still feel the blade. The life draining out. Join me after the final bell. Together, we will discover why. Gary, I can't right now. I gotta go to the nursing home and cry about it. The bell rings. Gary left with a strange transit map behind. Routes you've never seen. A certain stop is circled. Hattie. I like Drea too. But I gotta go see Hattie first. You arrive at Queen Mary's to meet Hattie for your date. It's 7.04 a.m. You're a little late. Look around, this could be any nursing home. Yellowed walls, stained drop ceilings. Supply carts line the corridors alongside the odd empty IV stand. The sun's not quite up, but the residents sure are. Walking the halls to get a bit of exercise. Chatting over weak decaf, decaf in the dining room next to the reception. Hi, Hattie. You came. Welcome to Queen Mary's, my home. What do you think? It's sad. I can see how you see it that way. To me, it's a place of rest, a waiting room for the afterlife. Behind Hattie, an old woman hangs up the lobby phone. The woman begins to cry. Her son. Probably making more excuses. Oh no. Ooh. Probably making more excuses not to visit. Can we do anything? Not unless she possess her son. And march his sorry butt down here. Hattie laughs. Please don't actually do that. It won't help. Besides, there's someone I want you to meet. Hattie floats off down the left corridor. All these corridors look the same. 
but she knows exactly where she's going. You pass a number of open doors, glancing inside. Some residents watch TV from their beds. Others just stare out their windows or at the walls. <laughs> Most rooms are bare. A few are decorated. There are Mm. There are tall plants, fine wood furniture. In one room, you spot a record collection. Essential possessions transplanted to make this place feel more like home. At the far end of a long call, Hattie stops and turns to you. So, I know this is probably obvious, but we're here to see Milton. He was my partner for 47 years. If you think I'm a firecracker, Milton's all sparks. You'll like him, I think. He's been doing worse lately. How can I help? I've been spending a lot of time here. It has him concerned. Milton says I'm hanging on to the past. He wants me to make friends who are more like me. Ghost, he means. I want to show him that I met a good one. I want him to meet you. It will make him so happy. Hattie turns to go into Milton's room. Good morning, Millie. Inside is an empty bed, neatly made. Milton is gone. Oh, no. Hattie frantically searches the room. She spots the chart at the foot of the bed. This says, this says he had an aneurysm. He was taken to the hospital. She looks at you with fear in her eyes. I, I have to go. I can come with you. I'd like that. I know it's a lot to ask, but I'm scared to do this alone. You arrive at the hospital with Hattie. She floats behind the reception counter to locate Milton's room, second floor, intensive care. Milton's room is damp. Oh no. A re reedy old man with a thick mustache lies in the bed, motionless. Oh. Oh, this is rough. It's quiet except for the steady whoosh and click of a machine by his side. A ventilator connected to a tube, run tube that runs down his throat. The machine is breathing for him. Oh no. Milton. She looks around as if he might already left his body. They were supposed to let him go. Hattie looks at Milton's chart. It says he was found unresponsive. No signs of brain activity. <laughs> but I still feel his presence. Don't you? Oh. I feel it, but where is he? Is he lost somewhere? Is he trapped in there? Oh, Milton. His sister has power of attorney. He didn't want this. He signed a form that said do not resuscitate. He didn't want this. Addie looks up. I'm sorry I dragged you here. I know this must be quite awkward. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone with Milton now. Are you sure you're okay? Yes. I'll be okay. Thank you for everything. As you step into the hall to leave, you can hear Hattie saying something at Milton's bedside. There's so much more, my love. Just you wait. Oh, that was rough. 
uh, we're gonna we're gonna cut the video short actually here mainly because I am crying big time so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, that was definitely a rough one uh, because uh, Quitting mean she might, uh, so, that was a rough one, because my granny was on a ventilator, my grandpa was too, actually, um, but my granny had a heart attack, three of them, and she had no brain activity, and my mom and aunt had to make the call to the plug and whew. yeah <laughs> and hearing it and knowing this is going up on her birthday it just hit home so I hope you guys enjoyed um, hug your loved ones and I will see you in the next video bye